Okay, this is the notes for section 3.2, linear combinations and ax plus by equals c. If you haven't done so already, make sure you stop the video uh, and read section 3.2 before going on. Uh, the big idea here is that we're looking at the sum of the multiples of x and y. If that's equal to a constant, we can write it in the form ax plus by equals c for all ordered pairs x, y. Okay. Well, for that, that, that idea is called linear combinations. Let's look at defining linear combinations. An expression in which all variables are raised to the first power and are not multiplied or divided by each other. Okay, So that would represent a linear combination, expression in which all variables are raised to the first power and not multiplied or divided by each other. Okay, So 3x plus 5y, that's a linear combination. Okay, 2y plus 7y, or 7x, excuse me, would be a linear combination. Okay. So at this time, I, I'm going to have you pause the video, and I'd like you to do this activity. It's on page 157 in the textbook. I've tried to put it in here as well, so it's, it might be a little bit hard to read because it's small in your notes, but it's in, on page 157 in your textbook. Okay, here's the answers to that activity then. So step one, if you're going to write an equation for that situation, we can write it as a linear combination where we have 2.5 times h, because it's 250 for each hamburger, and 2 times d. If I add those together, the total amount of money should be $30. Okay. Now, part two said solve the equation for, for d. So if I do that, uh, I'm going to start by um, bringing d. So I have d by itself, so I'm going to subtract 2.5 h from both sides. And then once I do that, I need to divide both sides by 2 to get my value for d. So d is equal to 1.25h plus 15. Okay. Step 3 says go ahead and graph that with, without taking the real world concepts into account. So what they want you to do is graph the line. Don't think about the fact that you're not going to buy a half a hot dog or a part of a hamburger. Um, so just graph the line that you would get from that. Well, to, to graph that line, I can I can use my slope-intercept form, and if I have a, a, a the slope of 1.25h, remember that's the same as um, uh, 5 fourths. So when you when you do that, you can use a slope of 5 fourths. You're going to have a y-intercept of 15, and you can go ahead and graph that. Now we'll talk a little bit more later about how we can actually graph it right from this form, and it's actually quite easy to do. But uh, for now, just using the slope-intercept form for graphing that. Okay, and then step four, it said to identify all the points that are, would be on that line that are actual po possible combinations for those hamburgers. Well, the only possible combinations are the ones where we have integers uh, for for our values. So. These are the four possibilities that you could get and still have a total of $30 uh, spent at uh, Harry's Hamburger Hobble. Okay, when we're looking at uh, functions, there's two different types of domains that we could actually be working with. The first is a continuous domain. And when we have a continuous domain, it's a function. It's it's a situation where our function we can graph it without lifting our pencil off the paper. So if you look at this right here, this graph right here, f1 of x, that function, I can graph that without lifting my pencil off the paper. So um, uh, it can continue forever in both those directions. Um, I didn't have to lift my pencil up. There's an infinite number of x, y ordered pairs that satisfy that function. The other type of domain for a function is a discrete domain. Okay, and in a discrete domain, instead of having a um, uh, continuous where I can just graph a line or a curve without pulling my pencil off the paper, I'm actually graphing individual points in a discrete domain. Okay, uh, in a discrete domain, we can actually like count up the number of ordered pairs that would satisfy that particular function. The other thing I want to talk about here is the idea of standard form for an equation. 
uh, of a line, and that's ax plus by equals c. So we've talked about y equals mx plus b form, and it turns out that this whole idea of using linear combinations leads to what we call standard form for a line. Okay, and in this case. A and B are not both zero, so we can't have both of them be zero. One of them could be zero, but not both of them. Okay? Linear combinations commonly occur in a number of fields of study that involve mixtures. So, so next we'd like to take a look at this example number one in which linear combinations do come into play. So what I'd like you to do is at this time stop the video and reread example two. <laughs> Okay, so this example says the following. Suppose you mix x liters of 1.5 moles per liter solution of acid with y liters of 6.5 moles per liter of solution. The final mixture needs to contain 15 moles of acid. So I think sometimes a, a question like this, as we get into some of the scientific terms, it, it gets confusing because of the actual terms. But let's just let's try and break that down a little bit. This moles per liter of solution Okay, that gets back to that idea of we're just talking about units. So this idea of moles per liter of solution, which I have here and here, um, that just represents the um, the uh, units on the 1.5 and the 6.5. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to think about all right. So I need 1.5 times the x liters, and I need 6.5 times the y liters. So it says in the end I need a total of 15 moles of acid. So if I take the 1.5 times however many liters I have of, of uh, the 1.5 solution that will give me the number of moles of acid from the x solution. And if I take 6.5 times the number of liters of the, that solution Okay, that will give me the number of moles of acid from that solution. So if I add those two together, that basically tells me how much acid I have. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that I have 15 for the acid. Okay, so this this linear combination, which is a linear uh, equation written in standard form, that represents the 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 mixture to get 15 moles of acid. Okay. Now part B says how many liters of 6.5 moles per liter solution must be added to 5 liters of 1.5 moles per liter solution to get 15 moles of acid. Okay. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this equation and I'm solving it when x is 5. And I'm solving it for y. So once I put once I have this equation up here, I'm just going to plug in whatever I know. Okay? And if I know what x is, I can plug that in. If I know what y is, I can plug that in. Either case, I can solve for the missing variable. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just now solving for y. So if I simplify this, we've got um, this right here. Subtract 7.5 from both sides, so I get this right here. And then if I divide by 6.5 on both sides, now it said round to the, the nearest hundredth of a liter. Therefore, when it, if you put that in your calculator, you get actually a decimal that goes on quite a bit more than that. But I rounded it to the nearest hundredth. Therefore, it would be 1.15 liters of the Y solution would give us that 15 moles of acid. <laughs> Thank you.